Hello and welcome once more to Weird Reality Shows, in case you didn't have your fill of techy garbage entertainment the first time round. This time we're going to be looking at some more god awful shows that I came across, as well as the return of what I am sure is everyone's favourite. No point beating around the bush, we all know why we're here, so let's get straight to the pain. I mean, if I don't start off with a trashy dating show, is this even a video about reality TV? Dismissed was a show that aired in 2001 on MTV, a channel notorious for their wonderful lineup of programming. To set this show apart from literally every other dating show ever made, Dismissed had someone being taken out on a date by two contestants at once. Each of the two also had a timeout card, which granted them 20 minutes alone with their date, while the other person fucked off. Since that sounds like a delightfully awful concept, let's see if the show lives up to it. First up, we've got Amy and Arlen competing for the affections of Brandon. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Amy. Ah, my name's Arlen. Amy. We, I think we got that part. Wow, just straight off the bat, huh? So what do you do? I'm unemployed. Unemployed? Great. He's gonna really like you. They've known each other for all of 10 seconds and have already decided to be mortal enemies. What is she, chloroforming him? If you don't pick me, you'll never see your family again. I like so I'm a little bit better and than you're so This was a terrible idea for a show. It's giving me a headache, though. Or well, maybe that's just the continuous VHS static in the background. Dismissed is super fast paced and doesn't have a lot of breathing room to get to know the contestants outside of their general introductions. It just skips straight to the meaty arguments and makeout scenes, which if we're being honest is probably all people want to see. Anyway, he ends up booting out Arlen since Amy probably threatened to kill his whole family or something. <laughs> Aw, oh, well I guess it all worked out in the end. Now we want to see one with two guys to see if they're wishing death upon each other the entire time. This time we've got Amber, Bruce and Texas. Which is a name, apparently. Me wear a tank top, me show muscles, and plus girl. Yep, no, okay, it's the exact same shit. Nice tatas, plump and juicy, cool stomach. Oh yeah, we got some real good contenders this time. So, uh, did you guys bring some protection? Hey, all right. No, didn't bring that. I like that. girls just throw it out there. <laughs> um, some protection, I mean. Can you tell this show is entirely genuine and not at all scripted beforehand? I hate to say it, but you're just... Yeah. Not even any closing words, he's just straight out of there. We had a really good connection, and who knows after this? I might be moving to, uh, Texas. <laughs> anyway, that's more than enough of that. Looks like we're gonna have to dismiss this one. <laughs> See what I did there? Finders Keepers was a British game show that had child contestants raiding various rooms to find hidden objects. It's like a live-action adaption of those I Spy books. Hello there, welcome once again to Finders Keepers. This is, of course, the house where you can do all those things that you can't actually do at home. This is the house where you can go crazy in the kitchen. Yeah! Crunch in the kids' room. Yeah! Shit on the floor. Yeah! And you can help me clear it up afterwards. No, I'm only kidding. That's Jeremy's job, isn't it, Jeremy? God, I hate my life. My name's Ian. My nickname is Joker, and you can see why. Where on earth did they find oh, these kids? So, genuinely, the goal of this show is just to make the biggest mess humanly possible without having the responsibility of needing to clean it up. That's Jeremy's job. Ooh. You know, now that I think about it, it's basically a home invasion game show. Now here we go, is Kenny find what he's looking for in time? 25 points up for grabs, can he do it? Walter, you're getting very warm, I can say that much. You thought I was doing here then, didn't you? <laughs> Diddling here, in fact. Excuse oh. me? They also give them all an incredibly blatant clue at the beginning of each round, telling them what they're meant to be searching for, and look, I know they're children, but a monkey could figure this out. They may as well just straight up tell them. These sit on your nose and wrap around your ears. See what I mean? Find glasses. You're looking for glasses. I also can't imagine being the person who has to meticulously organize these rooms to cleverly conceal an object, only to have it torn to shreds by rabid children in less than 20 seconds. A simple Neil. Every so often I will blow a whistle like this. <whistles> at which point these two have to throw a custard pie at each other. W why? <laughs> that definitely sounds like a rule that was made up on the spot for shits and giggles. Each other. That's it. That's it. I'm getting out of the way of that. Jesus, the amount of force you did that with. You don't have to kill her. <laughs> You got the custard pie right in the mush. No, you were out of time. Oh <laughs> you were out of time. She was looking for the ice and bike, but you were out of time, mate. This girl is having a very bad day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in the loo and everything. 30 seconds saying yourself. Look everywhere. Holy shit, that was a freaking speed run. They set up this entire room and he cleared it in four seconds. I'm getting legitimately stressed out watching this. There's so much going on at once. I have no idea how these kids aren't having a goddamn mental breakdown. Please, I'll fight it. Please stop shouting at me. In the end, the yellow team loses, but it turns out they win a consolation prize. What we got, Jeremy? Goodies galore. You're taking home this sweatshirt, wallet, frisbee, baseball cap, watch, and bag. In fact, your very own Finders Keepers goodie pack. It's Finders Keepers merch, so you can be forever reminded of your failure. 
Zex sent me to the ER as a show that I just had to include purely because of its name. As you most likely guessed, this one chronicles some of the weirdest stories from the emergency room resulting from people trying dumb shit while trying to have sex. But come on, the real reason they're here is because they had sex before marriage, which as we all know is a sin. Unfortunately, this one's kind of on a thin line when it comes to being a reality show, since all the cases shown in the episodes are recreations of events rather than being actual footage. But hey, that doesn't mean we can't make fun of it. I mean, at least that explains why the acting is so abysmal. Doctor, I haven't used a condom in five years since my vasectomy. What the hell is going on here? Our first case is some dude who got his dick stuck in a door. Somehow. He was in a great mood and I knew that this was the day that I could get him to finish those chores that I've been asking him to do for weeks. And I got him to do that with the promise of more sexy fun time. Yeah, that sounds like a healthy relationship. Oh yeah. Hey, sexy lady. Wanna watch me handle my tools? As I was looking at the new doorknob hole, I had an amazing idea. Oh no. I got so excited that I just said we should have sex right now through this door. What is wrong with people? Oh. Babe, what's wrong? Oh, I'm stuck. What do you mean you're stuck? I don't know, but I'm definitely stuck and... <laughs> ah, well if it isn't the consequences of my own action. My penis was stuck in this door hole. The paramedics didn't know exactly what to do when they saw Eric standing there. This is slowly starting to feel like the beginning of an incredibly specific genre of porn. Uh, this might be a bigger job than we can handle. <laughs> I feel like this entire show is just going to be about various objects being attached to penises. This next one wastes no time getting to it. It did come out blue. Are you saying your urine came out blue? No, not my urine. When I ejaculated. Anywho, the backstory on this one is that two people started making out in front of everyone at a sports game one day. Oh and then... It's possible it got mixed with the paint, but there are a few STDs that could cause this color. You didn't tell me you had an STD. You didn't tell me you had an STD? You didn't fucking tell me you had a... I'm gonna have to do a swab test to get some answers. What exactly is a swab test? The SCDs test is a swab that goes inside your urethra. Ah, no, stop it! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, but it, it doesn't stop there. I'm afraid a prostate exam is in order and it's a little invasive. It involves a finger in your rectum. Uh, I can't tell if he's looking forward to it or not. Have you suffered any injuries to your genitals? All right, okay. Brother to brother, it was in honor of homecoming. All right, ready? Cock and ball torture, CBT. Starting to think all of these cases are very much well deserved. You like to score big, do you, Jason? <laughs> um, whoa! Damn, almost got killed. Big on, woman, I am playing Fortnite. My idea was to bring the video game to life. Because that's, what, the ultimate fantasy? Imagine she just walks out dressed as Sonic or something. Sir Jason, how about you rescue a real life princess? Female, get out of the way, I'm getting the victory royale. Wanna play. Make believe. I want to die. And then he goes to get himself a costume just so this episode can be even more uncomfortable. Dude, I'm looking for like a medieval knight costume or something like that. What she sees what we got. This is the shittiest costume shop of all time. He's just asking what they have in stock and she's like, lol, find it yourself. God. Imagine walking into a fucking grocery store and asking them where the bread is and they're just like, what you see is what we got. Excuse me while I slip into something a little bit more. Medieval, my lady. Sir Jason, Sir Jason, the green dragon is ravishing me. Charge into the enchanted cave and rescue me. I don't blame you if you want to turn the video off now, by the way. No hard feelings. I get it. <laughs> Welcome to my lair. What fucking, what fucking game are you playing? Are you meant to be Yoshi? <laughs> Ravish me, dragon. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. Are we ever gonna get to the ER? I really gotta pee. He did not leave that costume on. I don't care if this is an exaggerated reenactment. He did not leave that shit on. Every time I thought I'd seen it all with this show, another video with an even more outlandish title appeared in my recommended. Man's penis catches on fire after strip tease goes wrong. Well, now I'm definitely curious. So I reached over to grab my lighter. I was just gonna flick it one time just to get a little bit of light in the room. There is a lamp right there. Ah! Man damages testicles after having sex on tree. Look, I'll give them credit for one thing. These titles are amazing. Ah! They'd probably do a whole video on this stupid show. <laughs> 
Here's Gogglebox, the show where you watch people less funny than you are watch TV. It's basically just kids react for commercial television and it's exactly as terrible as that sounds. This is why the Fine Bros it's wanted to create React World, today. damn it! For some reason, this show is a huge hit. Not just in Australia, but with various other incarnations across the globe. I'm pretty sure nearly every country has their own version of it. I want to stick with the Australian one though, because it's the one I see on TV every other goddamn day. 69. Yep. I reckon he was waiting for someone to hit 69 so he could be like, ah, this would be funny. Oh wow, I didn't know they hired comedians for this show. If I get another ticket, I think I'm gonna lose it. Give him another ticket. I'm, I'm Double or nothing. Okay, this bothers me every single time I see it. Get your gross ass feet out of full view of the camera. No one wants to see that shit. Are you serious? Am I serious? I'm deadly serious. Good, the little bastard. Yeah. Flog him. He's Pull his little... pants down and smack him. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing some of these people are confined to their couches. Drop, what? Why is he arguing? You need the 10 minutes, mate. Yeah. If I was a cop now, just, just for him doing my head in, I would have said, okay, mate, there you go. Take it now. The, the people on the TV he can't hear you. you. You know that, right? Not only has Tony risked dog. driving under the influence, yeah, he's, he's also failed to safely secure his dog in the car. What a fucking dipshit! I'm gonna come over there. <laughs> Not a single person gets up to see if he's dead. Probably because, as per the Gogglebox contract, he's not allowed to get up off the couch or they'll be shot. You know, I really love the commentary in this show. This is. <laughs> Here he is, look at again. I love the girl in the back there that's not even paying attention. This looks boring. You reckon? I love gardening. Yeah. In the nursing home, I'd love it. I like this show, I love gardening in Australia. Now, I thought the Australian version was bad, but the British Gogglebox has a spin-off called Goggle Sprogs. That is exclusively children reacting to things. I would like to meet the Queen like proper. I know, it'll be sick, like. I'd ask for some money, would you? I wouldn't ask for money off the Queen. Oh, and also celebrity yes. Gogglebox, who are any of these people. She helps me every week with like all kinds of stuff. They've definitely had sex. No! And finally, Vlogglebox, which is literally just kids react. When did you lose your virginity? Oh! He's a disgusting. He's a disgusting. These eyes say all oh, how old. Awesome. What are they on a bus? Yeah. Vlogglebox, reacting to killer bee sex. Yeah, okay, we're done here. Ah. And finally, it's time for some more South Beach tone. That's right, Bernice is back. Last time we talked about Bernice, uh, and Bernice is still legendary. And she's still the best character in the show. But we have to talk about the side character, um, Cosgrove. Because <laughs> while while Bernice is like the, the Bernice is pretty much the main character of South Beach Toe, but Cosgrove is like the the wimpy sort of dopey sidekick and his whole character is that he's um fat and stupid the following clip i'm about to show you happens in the just after he's fallen down the stairs oh my god what happened dave took a spill down three flights of stairs <laughs> man he would have wanted it this way <laughs> <laughs> He, he spends the rest of the season like crippled. The joke of the season, not only is he is his character like fat and stupid, but now every joke surrounding him involves the fact that he is now disabled. <laughs> oh yeah, there's this episode which I think is the Halloween special. And it's about um the the tow yard being haunted. <laughs> Holy shit! Fucking hell, it actually scared the shit out of me. Bernice and her fucking the others go to a haunted hospital <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, Checkmate is the name of the last episode, and it's an epic conclusion. Holy shit, this sounds like a fucking final battle. Yeah. <laughs> I got the final mission in a GTA game. The the last episode has a lot of epic action scenes and chases and stuff. I genuinely think they come up with the action scenes first and then build a plot around them like an Uncharted. <laughs> Can't remember exactly what's going on. Yeah, there's an ostrich. Is that an emu? In the toe. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember why this happens. <laughs> <laughs> now he's more disabled. Yeah, yeah, so this is in the previous episode. He, he gets tackled by his crazy ex and then he gets kidnapped. And like the camera crew just do nothing about this. Like they don't alert anyone. Come on, Bernice. She could be back any second. Get me out of here, please. <laughs> don't the entire bed frame. I have a theory 
that there are no cameramen in this show and it's like um some higher entity or being <laughs> that like watches over them right there, there's so many opportunities for the cameramen to like intervene and help but they never do so i, I just think that there, there is this isn't a documentary series in universe it's just people are watching from a, like a higher dimension <laughs> it's just an omnipotent being what the fuck? <laughs> We got ourselves a food truck. What the hell are we supposed to do with it now? That sounded like the start of the Moto Moto song from Madagascar. <laughs> I'm happy that we have this show to compare to every other reality show because I don't think this, this this tops everything. This is like the gold standard. Everything else is awful by comparison yeah. of how good South Beach Toe is. I've never seen a show where I am just absolutely baffled by whatever it is supposed to be. I think it just excels in every single area, like in terms of it being comedy. I, I don't even know if I'd call it a satire because I don't know if it's that self-aware but this is the very second episode of the show. It's called Toe Wars and this is very early days of South Beach Toe right? A lot they're still trying to find their toe. But yeah um, they have a war with a rival toe company and it's really strange. Okay so they go to the rival toe company right and Bernice is there. Bernice works at the rival tow company. She switches sides because she realizes that this tow company is bad. What? And Bernice di didn't start at South Beach Tow? No, she started as the villain. Holy shit. She had a redemption arc. I'm just, I, I am amazed. I can't believe Bernice is a traitor. That's such a good like, that meme like template right there. We'll find the yeah. Bernice is just vibing. This is like one of the only times where they actually acknowledge that there's cameramen here. What the fuck? Well. What? D this has thrown my entire perception of the show out of whack. I am so confused. Early South Beach Toe is very different to late South Beach Toe. So they are being filmed and the cameramen are just fucking dickheads who refuse to help? <laughs> yeah, it takes like for the fifth episode for her to show up, I think. It's How really did this show survive without the news? It starts out so chill as well. It's like a completely different person. And then you compare it to like later on in the show where in every interview segment she's like screaming. I don't think she actually beats anyone up until- Oh no, never mind! This is the beginning of her the descent. First, <laughs> the first time Bernice tasted blood. Oh god, no this is actually- Like the editing makes this so scary. He's on the phone and she's like approaching. Do you think tow companies actually fight? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I have learned anything from doing these two videos is that watching reality TV gives me the biggest headache and I never want to do it again. Thanks for watching.